Hello, I am Manuiltos, and today I am going to be talking about political parties, um, specifically relating to the United States, which at the current time is a country where I live. Now, I, I just want to bring this out in, up front. Um, I don't really associate my ideals with a specific party in the sense that I am not going to change my mind on issues if the party changes its mind on issues. I change my mind on issues if I see a reason to change my mind on issues based on a, um, let's say something is superior or inferior in an issue. Or another way to say this is that I am, I prefer to, uh, have a greater loyalty to uh, certain values than to parties and and that means that if for some reason a certain party were to change its values and I were a part of that party then I would obviously not support that party but if another party changed its values to something that I can get behind then I would obviously uh, choose to become part of that party and uh, Some people might call that disloyal, but I think what matters is the issues more than uh, the party the, because if uh, your party loses track of uh, which side of the issues they're on and they're here and there and everywhere then what's the point of having a party? Okay, I'm back after um, having to answer the door and taking a brief break, but you may be asking why am I qualifying all these things? Why am I saying these things and why am I trying to what some people may call virtue signaling and I won't deny that there may be some of that in there, but also I want people to understand what my position is and where I'm coming from so that they don't misconstrue or misinterpret or misunderstand what I'm trying to say because I know very well that I do not and in some cases cannot for the time being fully comprehend everything that exists and as such I am speaking from a limited perspective and I'm pretty sure most people listening to this also have a limited perspective because let's be honest most people don't know everything and i am among one of those people that doesn't know everything so i won't put a false pretense of this being a complete or final position of mine but anyway let's get back on topic and that is the political parties and what i've seen uh from my perspective is that during the Obama administration, the Democrat Party has been the party of Obama. They have supported Obama behind most things, although towards the end, there were some uh, divisions rising up in the Democrat Party. However, that hasn't opened up to a full split in the party. And for the time being, I don't think it's going to. While the Republican Party had become the opposition party to uh, Barack Obama, and in doing so, it had attracted a number of different groups that opposed Barack Obama for a number of different reasons. As such, I would have to say that it is difficult and, in fact, uh, incorrect to ascribe a single set of values to the Republican Party because it is so diverse. You've got people in that party who uh, are self-proclaimed Leninists and you've got people in there who are the KKK. You've got people in there who are uh, libertarians, conservatarians, neoconservatives, paleoconservatives, the alt-right, um, and a whole bunch of different groups that essentially can have a political position on any single point 
of a political ex of a political spectrum, um, even with the left right dichotomy, from all the way to the falling off the left end to falling off the right end and everywhere in between. And for this reason, there are now divisions rising up in the Republican Party that had not arisen before. Now, the main voices of the Republican Party can be discerned as a few different groups, and that would be the more neoconservative establishment Republicans who are from the Bush era and they follow the policies of Bush which uh, is a sort of Republican progressivism in a sense although also a bit with a, a more stronger foreign policy and uh, in some cases they are a bit more for interventionalism then you have the more classically liberal side of the Republican Party with, uh, let's say, Ted Cruz and Rand Paul and a number of others who are more for um, individual liberties and shrinking the size of government. And then you've got a newer wing, which is the, um, as Steve Bannon would describe it, nationalist and populist, where it's all about uh, the best for the country and following the whims of the people. And those are the general divisions of a Republican Party. And now it seems that in recent times, this new uh, populist, as it is called, movement that uh, came up behind Trump is indeed teaming up with the more establishment uh, neoconservative side of the party, um, specifically in the sense of universal health care, which is something that the paleoconservatives and classical liber liberals and the conservatarians, which are a mix of conservatives and libertarians, essentially people who uh, want liberalism but with some conservative values attached to it a lot of Tea Party people are that way they have they have opposed these things all the way through in the Obama administration and now they see that the main body and the leadership of the Republican Party is turning against them and going with something that they had opposed all along. Uh, for example, Ted Cruz himself um, saying that he wanted to repeal every word of Obamacare. And then you have Donald Trump, who in contrast says he wants to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, which um, for a lot of people that wanted to shrink the size of government is definitely not going far enough and I'm going to be clear if you've been watching this channel for a long time or if you're just getting into it I'm not afraid of sharing my political views and I'm also not afraid of people questioning my political views and the reason why I make these political videos isn't simply to get my views out there or to convince other people of my views it's also to establish a discourse because I don't want to live in an echo chamber where I decide what is right and wrong. I want to live in a world where I can find people from other sides of the issues, all sides of the issues, who tell me what their perspective is so that I understand where everybody's coming from. And if I say something that is incorrect, somebody can point it out and I can correct myself for uh, self-betterment and possibly the betterment of others involved. And I think that's a good thing to do in politics that I think a lot of people um, are actually shying away from, where people, instead of deciding to peacefully come together and uh, establish common ground and see where our differences lie in a cordial and friendly manner, have chosen instead to uh, become provocateurs uh, and provoke the other side and insult their political opponents 
when that in fact creates a division and a weakness inside the country as um, one ha would have said that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Now, I'm not saying that we should all be agreed on the same ideology, on the same worldview, on the same paradigm. I'm saying that we should at least know where everybody is coming from so that we can understand that the both the both the big parties in the United States, the Democrats and the Republicans, the average member of these parties doesn't want to destroy the country. They want what's best for the country and its people. It's just that they decide to go about doing these things in different ways. Now, that's not to say that there isn't a correct answer in these matters, because I'm going to be honest with you. I believe that there are certain political uh, ideas that are more effective or superior than others and that is why i always pick sides in politics now that being said always picking the same side is not principled because unless that side itself is defined by a specific set of principles which neither of the parties are I mean, I'm not saying that they don't have platforms. They do have platforms, but the platforms change over time as the whims of the members of the parties change. And which means that if these things change, then there has to be a self-examination in the members of the parties to decide whether or not uh, the members still agree with the ideas of the party and if they don't they should leave um, this by the way is also why I am NOT a populist it is because I don't always agree with the majority and that is one thing that uh, the the so-called founding fathers of the United States did envision it was the tyranny of the majority in which if a country is established in a manner in which it is easy for the people to get what they want they end up oppressing other people and this especially happens uh, in periods of time uh, such as now when there are increased collectivist ideas swirling around in the public consciousness and it creates an us against them mentality in which that inevitably leads in a, if there is a populist system the majority oppressing the minority the us oppressing the them and i don't want that to happen and that is why i am not a populist I think that every policy, every issue should always be decided on is this right or is this wrong? What, how does this equate to the moral values? And people have moral values. That is a truism, as some would say. And I would even go so far as to say that most people are born with uh, what some would say is an instinct, but what uh, traditionally in the English language has been known as a conscience for moral values. And the key uh, in the subversion of these moral values leading to injustice is if these values are perverted in a sense. And I'm not talking uh, necessarily in a sexual manner. I'm talking about propaganda, for example, in which people who intentionally subvert moral values choose to pervert them for others. Uh, for example, dehumanizing a segment of a population would be a way to pervert moral values, where people think killing, uh, murdering people isn't a good thing, stealing people's stuff isn't a good thing, and these things are things in 
I'd say almost every society that are agreed upon. But if you can ever so slightly change the definition of what murder is, change the definition of what stealing is, and change who it applies to, then without actually getting rid of the value itself, you can pervert the value in order to have it mean something that it generally would not mean. And this we see in the dehumanization and then uh, genocide or ethnic cleansing uh, that has happened in some places in history. And the justification of doing things that are normally considered immoral, but because of some people choosing to subvert the values and therefore pervert the values for everyone else, they can't happen. And the reason I make this distinction between subversion and perversion is because a subversion of a moral value is when you recognize what the value is and you recognize that what you're doing is against that moral value, while a perversion would be you would recognize a moral value, but you decide to bend the rules so that the moral value isn't in judgment of what you are doing. And it's easier to pervert moral values on a large scale than it is to subvert them. And that is why racist propaganda exists. That is why... Uh, that is how, in fact, many countries ended up getting some degree of support behind uh, unjust treatment of the so-called them in the us against them mentality, which I so wish to avoid in the future of not only the United States, but any country at all. And... Uh, was there something else I wanted to say? Well, um, and I see that there is a split coming in the Republican Party, and this isn't the first time that I've mentioned this. I've seen this earlier when uh, the on the Republican National Convention, Ted Cruz was denounced by many members of his party for not explicitly endorsing Donald Trump for president, even though Ted Cruz overall said things that the party and the people in the party I would have supposed would agree with, uh, telling people to vote based on their conscience, vote for people that you think are doing the right things and making the right decisions, which normally would not have offended the Republicans but there arose a strong partisan spirit so strong that they were offended not because of what Ted Cruz said but rather because of what he had not said and I think that that is going too far in the sense that this links up to their supposed legal values as well as the moral values because the legal values themselves are based on moral values. That is why they can be justifiable as legal values. Because to say that it is unjust to accuse someone uh, of something that that person has not done, or accuse someone based on something that that person has not said, and then going ahead and accusing them, not in a legal sense, but in a social sense, is unjust. And you might be saying, well, isn't this a bit social justice -y? And I have to say that it is a bit social justice -y. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because it is a hypocrisy in what I would perceive to be their legal values, in the sense where they wouldn't... I'd I hope not want somebody to be brought to court on in a 
equivalent legal situation, and so it would not make sense for them to heavily criticize someone in an equivalent social situation either. I'm not saying that what they did was unjust in a legal sense or that they shouldn't have a right to do that. I'm saying that they shouldn't have done that based on their own values. But of course, maybe they don't have those values. Maybe they are indeed pragmatists and really want to win with their party. Because that's not what I'm going for. I'm going for doing, making the right choices, the morally correct choices. And you know what? Some people might disagree with that. And I understand that some people are more for pragmatism or populism or nationalism or internationalism or uh, elitism that I don't think that's very popular nowadays but I think that all of these things have to come behind a strong moral center now I'm not accusing Donald Trump or anyone else that is involved in this universal healthcare turnaround where they had advocate where those who had advocated against universal healthcare now are in favor of it i'm not saying that what they're doing is immoral i'm saying that what they're doing is hypocritical which i guess is mildly immoral but definitely not to such an egregious extent and that's my opinion and i'd love to have some feedback am i overreacting am i thinking too much am i am i putting too much thought into this um because i do think about things like this a lot i guess uh i recently had the realization that i philosophize so much that i might as well call myself a philosopher but i do think that there are some people with uh, doctorates that would take offense to that um, even though if you really think about it somebody who makes clocks is a clockmaker somebody who uh, does astronomy uh, and does it well is of course an astronomer and someone who uh, cooks a lot is a cook and the actual application of a deed does not necessarily necessitate um, I think that may have been a tautology there a specific study of that deed in the sense that there are some people that are really good at jobs that uh, they in, um, in an academic sense would not be qualified for and I'm not saying that I'm a professional philosopher because I'm not. I'm not getting paid to philosophize. And should people get paid for that? For some general political philosophy or some philosophy on morals or uh, as I occasionally do, epistemology, epistemology? I don't think people should be expressly paid for that specifically. Although, if some... Well, I'm not saying that people shouldn't be paid for those either. I'm just saying that I wouldn't pay someone to do that uh, unless I specifically thought that it would be good to patronize that person and to support that person and to patronize them not in a condescending sense, but rather in the actual application of that verb uh, referring to the same kinds of patronage uh, that, uh, let's say, Renaissance or Renaissance, if you prefer, uh, artists received from uh, various monarchs, politicians, rulers, clergymen in uh, the Renaissance or Renaissance, if you please. And I guess that's today's fiat not theology, philosophy. <laughs> Although, if, if you'd like me to talk about theology, I'm, I'd be glad to do that too. I'm not afraid to uh, talk about almost any subject, unless I think that, uh, well, maybe um, what people would consider smut. I, I probably wouldn't talk about that, uh, as 
I don't see that as something that would be uh, appropriate for this channel uh, or something for me uh, to particularly be appropriate for me to research into. Uh, so no, if if you want me to um, discuss that specific topic, no, I will not. Uh, I will shrug you off and say, do it yourself if you want to, because I'm not doing it. Um, but any other topic, any topic, to be honest, um, especially if it involves some thinking and especially if it is controversial to some extent. So I think that this may be the beginning of a split in the Republican Party that may widen uh, to the point that it eventually destroys the Republican Party. Uh, in other words, that, I, that may very well happen, but uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, so once again, do comment if you agree, if you disagree, if you think that there's some additional information that I should have covered, if you want a sequel to this video, um, if you have any advice uh, about anything whatsoever, even if it doesn't pertain specifically to this video, I am willing to read it uh, on this video as well, because I do read every single comment, because let's be honest, at this point that I'm making the video, I don't actually have that many subscribers and therefore I'm not receiving too many comments because there are not many commenters, uh, which goes back to me not having many subscribers. So thank you all for listening, I suppose, because not much would have been going on screen. Um, maybe I should get an, another person to animate stuff for me because I can't be bothered uh, animating, what, 30 minutes of audio? Oh my goodness, that would be a nightmare, uh, because I use Windows Movie Maker, I'd have to do everything slide by slide, or uh, make an animation in Blender or something, which... This video is going up the day after I'm recording it, so that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, that, that is the, the cycle of my videos. I, I'm pretty close to the present in uh, the way I record. So, uh, once again, thank you all for listening, and uh, I'll be seeing you all next time on Wiltos, over and out.